I'd like to welcome everybody to our meeting this evening. Uh, it's got some beautiful weather and it's hard to get people into a meeting when uh, it's starting to get nicer. If, um, if we could just stand for a minute and Donnie, if you'd lead us to the, on the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, welcome. Um, I just have a few points to go over before uh, tonight's presentation. And tonight's presentation is going to be... Um, fairly informal. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope you see where we're coming from and what our goals are with, with our archives. Um, first thing that I'd like to mention is, um, I don't know if anybody here is familiar with our um, revolutionary and pre-revolutionary war cemetery that's over at Newside, off of Newside Road. It has the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution monument on it and such. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, during the storms, uh, we had we had uh, some tree damage that came down, and Amanda and Mark from the township and I went over and met with um, Public Works, because the township actually owns that. Uh, we we had that changed over back when we were the historical society back in 2007, and um, Parks was extremely. Uh, I, they, they need a standing ovation. Um, by the end of the day, they had all the trees um, cleared out of the um, cleared out of the uh, cemetery, and uh, part of the fence got damaged. And I drove by; I'd, it looked like that that part of the fence was already repaired. But if not, that's going to be repaired. But again, hats off and a, a huge thank you to uh, Public Works. Um, we will not be having a presentation in April that'll be strictly um, just a business meeting uh, everybody's more than welcome to join us that's probably not the most exciting reason why you'd want to show up to one of our meetings but uh, that's how we discuss how uh, we can get other uh, programs for the future and different um, efforts that we want to put in again it, you're more than welcome to join us but there won't be a presentation in April in our May presentation, I'm real excited. Um, I don't know, I think a lot of you would be um, know Dave Beiser. He's the uh, reenactor of um, John Harris and other um, characters, and he always does the uh, Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July up at the uh, um, John Harris home, uh, John Harris Mansion in Harrisburg. Well, um, Dave's going to come in. He had written a book called Visionary Road to the Capitol, the little known story of John Harris Jr. And uh, he's going to bring his book and give a nice discussion on, on John Harris. And again, if none of you have ever heard him speak, he's an excellent speaker. And uh, matter of fact, I, I, forget, I, forget, I think it was pre-COVID, um, he actually rode in to Heroes Grove on a horse and uh, reenacted uh, John Harris and he stayed in character the whole time it was it was really interesting and he will have books uh, with him for sale yes so with that said um, I would like to start our um, presentation tonight which deals with um, our archives and um, I think one of the before I really get moving I have a couple points all of our archives absolutely no taxpayer dollars have been used to acquire any of these. Um, all artifacts are donated or on loan. And what I mean by on loan is a number of us um, go out seeking um, these items and because, again, we don't have money to buy it that's um, from the township, we purchase it ourselves and um, uh, we, we use them in our display cases and we also offer I know upon when I when I'm no longer on this earth, um, my my uh, artifacts will come here and and uh, belong to the township. So um, no tax dollars. And and the interesting thing is we've been in existence for about six years. And in those six years, 
the only tax dollar monies that we spent was just under five hundred dollars, and um, that was uh, that was a few years ago where we purchased boxes with, um, with acid-free paper so that we can store our artifacts. And the reason that we have artifacts and the reason that we're gathering these is that we want to preserve them and we want to educate all those that, people that are interested in knowing what they are and educating ourselves too. As you'll see, I have a couple items tonight that I will show that um, we're still researching because we don't have all the answers to them. And um, the worst thing that, and every one of us at, the, in, at this table tonight has heard this, um, we run into somebody and they say, oh, I wish I knew you wanted those, I just threw them away. And uh, some of these t things are, are um, the only one that might possibly is left, uh, like the uh, stock certificate that I purchased from the uh, original, um, the first company that was gonna try to put a trolley in and I was real lucky to, to purchase that. I've n I didn't even know it existed. And uh, so we have that out in the display area. Another way that we try to um, preserve these items is, uh, again, we go out for grants. And Sarah, where'd you go? There you are. Sarah um, filled out an application for what's known as a microgrant and uh, we're asking for $1,000. We'll know in a couple months whether or not we were successful. And with that money, what we want to do is to um, buy shelving that we can put all the boxes on and really start to get organized. And um, I already mentioned that uh, the monies that we spent so far um, and the only taxpayer money that we ever spent was for the acid-free storage boxes. And um, another reason why we're doing this, this uh, little presentation tonight is we're hoping that we can get some interest in the public because in August, at our August meeting, we were hoping that um, people like yourselves could bring in artifacts that maybe you have, maybe family photographs, anything that dealt with the history of Lower Paxton. Um, not just history of the period, but um, specific Lower Paxton. And if you can do that, um, you could tell your own stories. And uh, um, quite honestly, if those pictures would, and we have the stories of those, uh, we may ask if we can make a copy of them and uh, we'd put your story with it. Because again, that's how we continue the history and the knowledge of this township um, for the future. And uh, with that said, um, let us begin. One of the first things that I wanna bring up tonight and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend that I'm kind of like an auctioneer here. Um, one of the first things is that we have a couple items that, uh, that we're not real sure what they are. I mean, we know what they are, but we don't know the full history of it. And uh, for one thing, uh, this was a purchase that I had made. This is a pipe, but what it is, it's, it's definitely not a full Indian pipe. This was mass produced. It has a seam, so it was built, it was molded. However, it might have been used in trade. And it was found in a farmer's field behind the, um, can everybody hear me with, do I need a mic, okay. It was found in the farmer's field behind about where Memorial Eye Institute is now. And um, there has been some, you know, some, I have talked to some people, um, I mean, some, some referred to it, it was used for other purposes, but uh, we're keeping it historical here tonight. I, and, uh, but it could have been used um, for trade, you know, back, back in the uh, 17, 1800s. So uh, we found that, found that interesting. Another, another item that we have, if you'll hold that up for me, Donnie, is we don't have, any proof on this. We've seen pictures that look like it, but when back again, when we were the historical society, uh, one of the first things that somebody did was they came in, they were from Lingostown, and gave this to us, and they said there was one single gas lamp in Lingostown, and that's the mantle from it. Um, again, until we like to prove history three different ways. You know, where, where we can, um, we like the stories, but then we like to have, if you want to give that to 
she'll take it. We like the story, and then we almost watched history go away right there. <laughs> so we, we, like, we like the original stories, but we also like to have um, either photographs or um, something written that's documented that shows what it is. So again, we're continuing to research that item. But uh, that, from there on, from here on, everything's researched. One of the most interesting buildings, and known by most everybody in this area, is the Lower Paxton School. Now, as you're looking at that school in that picture, that's when it was a consolidated school. And the consolidated school was amazing because the consolidated school was a high school, a junior high, and an elementary school. It had one room for each of the six grades in elementary. And I'm telling you, the more that I study these school, this, this particular building, the more impressed I am with the administrators back then, with the school board and that. They were extremely innovative. And we'll get into that a little bit more. My father taught at this um, school and uh, taught history. And I doubt very much that he knows everything about the building that we know now. And as we talk about, um, as we talk about Lower Paxton, we start seeing banners like this. Lower Paxton High School. This one happens to be 1924. We have a number of these, and I, and I sincerely want to thank, um, we inherited a lot of this from the um, Lower Paxton High School Alumni Association and with uh, Bob Stamwell. And uh, here's one from 1933. Again, Lower Paxton High School. But the interesting thing is, here we have one, VHS. And when people see it, they go, oh, that's Lower Paxton. But they forget what the building originally started as. And the building originally, which just consisted of the building that is there, was a vocational school. Now keep this in mind. This is, this is the late teens, early 20s that this vocational school was built. You have a population of about 2,600 people living in this township. And, and um, you're coming out of the end of the second industrial revolution. So somebody was thinking, knowing that there was going to be a transition, because with only 2,600 people, most of those people were um, employed or owned farms, and it was agricultural. And they knew that there was a change coming, that the trades were needed. Here's a picture, and this is from all these, everything I show you is in our archives. This is a uh, photograph, which I'm sure was staged at the time, but um, it shows the shoppies in, in that agricultural school. And another interesting point about, um, about these kids that um, are in this agricultural program, or in this uh, vocational program, is that three of these people, three of these students, went up to Penn State and found out how to run a, um, a county fair. They, they, had no, they, had, they had the idea, but they had no idea how to run it. They went up to Penn State, talked to the agricultural department, learned how to um, run a fair, and that fair was the Linglestown Fair. And again, in the 1920s, keep in mind as I mentioned, that we had around 2,600 people. That fair, in its heyday, no pun intended, drew over 20,000 people. And those people mainly got off at where the Eagle Hotel is and had to walk, uh, you know, because they, they uh, had to walk or um, have a, go by horseback into the fair. So in the early 1930s, the names um, on the board now are like uh, Elmer Eller, who was one of the biggest builders in the area that um, founded Colonial Park. Also, um, Elias Phillips, Dr. Elias Phillips, who was a minister at the, um, I think it was the um, uh, Colonial Park Reformed Church. And um, it, was, it was basically about where the... Um, um, 
where you get on the interstate um, right past uh, Red Lobster. It was a huge, huge um, building. Well, Dr. Phillips was on this school board, and he was huge on um, with an interest in the um, vocational um, trades. And again, the elementary school I went to was E.H. Phillips, which was named after him. So we have a whole set, we have a whole series of these photographs, which um, have uh, steam shovels and such. And this is, the, this is where they're changing from that vocational school and building on in the early, early 1930s and creating the consolidated school, which then was the Lower Paxton um, School District, which then changed in the uh, late 50s to um, the Central Dauphin School District. But again, we have a whole series of these. Uh, a lot of these were on loan because uh, the church that owns the property right now, um, they just did a presentation and wanted the history of the building, which I helped them with. And I uh, loaned out uh, some of our fo fo photographs. Sports, now and then, were huge. And um, this was, you know, this was... Uh, Catholic High School, which then eventually became Bishop McDevitt. Um, so it was Lower Paxton versus Catholic High. And it seemed like the games were played in Susquehanna because a lot of the um, programs that I find, uh, everything says you know, their home games are at the Susquehanna field. And um, the, we have a number of these. So again, if, once, we get, once we get organized, um, we are going to allow um, anybody that's requesting different items that they would like to do research and such on. One of us would be more than happy to dig those out and sit with you, um, you know, while you, you can make, take notes, et cetera. And uh, um, for, so, for instance, we have just a spattering of yearbooks up here. I think we have every yearbook. Now, there are certain yearbooks that we only have one of those and they, there may only be one in existence. Um, those we might not offer you know, for you to sit down unless uh, we're really, really careful because uh, once they're gone, we're, 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 uh, we're kind of up the creek. But, but sports was, was huge. Doesn't this remind you of the helmets they wear today? <laughs> I mean, this was an actual Lord Paxson helmet. And uh, it actually is quite heavy, but it's, 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 it's all leather. And um, I really don't see any bracket other than a chin strap that would have had, it would have been kind of like early version of that, but without any type of face guard. So again, feel free when, uh, when we're done here this evening, feel free to pick that up, look at it. Just don't pick up our glass thing that... Uh, <laughs> and another item which I find really cool because it's not just a baseball bat, it actually says Lower Paxton High School on it. And um, I'm sure that this is probably the only one of those around. Um, and it's pretty cool because, you know, I don't know how many of you played baseball. I always struck out, so I don't, never had this happen, but um, how many these wooden bats, you know, never made it through a season. So that's pretty cool. And another nice thing now, my father wouldn't have, he was there when it was the junior high, but he was the uh, baseball coach. And no, I did not make him happy with my skills. <laughs> and another thing with the high school, we had a chippy hat. The poor seventh graders at one point had to wear these. And the principal would discipline you if you didn't wear it. Um, yeah. So, so uh, if, you, if you think there's bullying now, I mean, just... Uh, well, I got in trouble a lot. <laughs> the, next, the next item that I want to bring up is kind of interesting, and it actually has a, a personal connection to Denise, who's my... Not my Vanna White, because she'd be turning on things. But uh, um, Denise's mother, I think, actually helped 
man this tower? Now my grandmother. Grandmother. I think that's my grandmother. Nice. Well, this, this tower was located where the, uh, that's an evangelical church now in Mountain Road. And um, on the cross. Uh, we're Christ Lutheran, and um, it's the highest spot, and during World War II, um, this was a lookout tower just looking for any type of foreign aviation, and we were lucky because I had a person that, that manned that, that actually gave me one of their armbands. Um, so, um, I thought that was really cool to have that. The next thing, back in the day, prior to, before we had refrigerators, we had cold boxes, ice boxes, or ice chests. And you would have to go and you would put a sign in your window whether or not you wanted any, any ice and how much, 25, 50, 75, 100 pounds. And the ice man would, would deliver it put it right in wherever you needed it, and that's how you kept your food cold. It's our understanding that this is a piece of what that ice house was. Um, and this is on, what would that lane be called? Uh, amber. Amber. This is on, this is on amber. And um, it, to our best guess, that's, that was a part of uh, what stored the... Um, uh, the ice and if you look at the if you look at some of the um, Latches they're the heavy latches that almost look like you'd use on a freezer so we thought that was pretty neat and um, Just to tell you a story about how lucky some people can get now I own two of these now, but um, You know, I forget what I paid for the first one this one. I only paid about ten dollars for I wasn't that wasn't too bad but a friend of mine who's usually here um, he always beats me. He buys this box of junk for like 50 cents. He's taking this piece out, this piece out. He has a stack of about 10 of these on the bottom. So it's, it's, it's all on how lucky you get. Another, another way that we look for articles is um, we will go around and look at um, old sites whenever we have permission where there would be a building taken down. This um, actually is from uh, the 1951 plane crash, the A-26 that crashed into uh, Blue Mountain. And all three of the, uh, all three of the uh, airmen were, were killed immediately. And um, these items were found using metal detectors. Um, again, we got permission to go. And, you know, it's a, it's a sad situation when things like this happen because this would have been next, this happened on April 21st, so the anniversary is next month, and that would be um, 73 years ago that that happened. This was actually found on the site um, by, by um, Marlon Pottiger, and he was just a teenager at the time, and before they, because what they did on the, with the air uh, plane was they took the they took the tail and the two engines and they buried what was left of the rest of it, and uh, this was a, this was on there. And, uh, prior to Marlin passing, he donated this to us. Now, another part that we do here is we can take we try to take and, and give respect to um, to things that have happened in the past. Um, for instance, the death here. We were um, with going with um, the Legion, the Post 272, who paid for this sign. Um, we have this honoring the three airmen that, that passed. Now, we don't mark exactly where the site is because, again, we're trying to keep that fairly um, quiet because out of respect of, of the three pilots or the three airmen there was only one pilot and two air crew um, that passed but if you get a chance this is just about three feet outside of um, Heroes Grove and um, it gives the whole history of it and that to, to make that sign 
or to create that sign, um, that's probably a good um, 40 plus hours of research. And uh, we actually found, if you look in the middle of that, um, you see two people. I couldn't find a picture of the third, but the person that's on the left um, was the pilot. And um, he had an eight-week-old daughter when, uh, when he was killed. And I actually found her living in Ohio um, through a lot of research. And we had a really nice presentation, and I tried to, um, I sent her a letter, uh, I think I sent her two letters, and she never responded. So I had to back away from that, unfortunately, because I didn't want, I, I don't know what, what's, what she knows, you know, and, and um, what her life was. I, I know what she did for a living, and that the Internet's great for stuff like that, but um, I didn't want to uh, force her to come here if, without her uh, really wanting to see what we found. So we have also a lot of pictures like this in our, um, in our uh, collection. This happens to be uh, the Eagle Hotel. And it uh, doesn't look quite like that right now, but um, I, I really thought that was a cool picture that I would show you because we have a lot of photographs like that. And once we get organized, uh, we'll be able to show a lot more um, it would be easier. You could say, hey, I would like to see such and such, and we could probably pull out a book and show that to you. Again, um, one of the things that we've been really doing, now this is a photograph that was given to us, but um, we, a lot of what we're doing is buying postcards of the old restaurants, restaurants that m most of us grew up you know, from this area and ate at and completely forgot about or have some fond memories. Um, and we have some pretty interesting postcards on that. Uh, what I'd like to do as I'm, as I'm ending tonight is to make sure that you know that right outside this door to the right, and I hope that you visit it tonight and you continually visit it because we're going to try to rotate this at least one, one of these display cases every three months. But there's three display cases. That one is dedicated completely to the, um, to the wreck. A lot of that right there is um, from my collection. And that book that's sitting on the um, shelf in front of that photograph, um, right by the banner that I held up, that is from the 1700s. And um, uh, I found that to be quite interesting because it's talking about the settlers. And it's all in old the old English, very, very hard to read. Um, but it talks about the, the initial settlers coming into Paxton, which um, would have been our area, which then eventually broke up into uh, uh, upper middle and lower. And, um, but again, please come and visit these in the bottom, because this is interesting. A lot of people don't understand this, but you'll see it if you go out and see the display case. The bottom, on the right-hand side of that case, there's um, some bottles and some um, advertising from Coble's Dairy. Is, did any, anybody ever hear of Coble's Dairy in this area? Most of us growing up, it was Species, Harrisburg, Lankerbrook. Um, Coble's Dairy was right at the border. Matter of fact, some of it um, went into Susquehanna Township, but it would be kind of behind... Um, where um, the funeral home is, used to be Zimmerman's funeral home, or, you know, out on 22 Zimmerman, Zimmerman Hour. Yeah. It's kind of back behind there. And the land was actually leased. I did research on it. The land was leased, and, um, uh, but they had this, this dairy. And there's also another dairy that was um, Colonial Park Dairy, and I've only seen a picture of a bottle. I've never been able to find anything else about it. And then, of course, we had, um, we had Leo's Dairy, which um, uh, Donnie went out, and uh, we had found a, um, a, a piece of artwork of George Washington riding a horse. And this piece of art hung in the Lower Paxton Township building hallway forever. I mean, 
anybody that went to LP knew knew about it. And uh, we found out where it was. And when Donnie went down, um, he talked to the individual and uh, the person gave it to us. But he also had a bottle from Leo's Dairy. And the interesting thing is, um, was it the word Rutherford? Rutherford was spelled wrong. Yeah, Rutherford was spelled wrong on the bottle. <laughs> and that's out in the uh, middle case. Um, that's You can kind of see it on the bottom shelf on that case, but it's out there and feel free to go look at it then. And um, again, I, I, I hope that um, you come in and enjoy this because this is, this is history. This is, this is the township I know I lived here all my life and, um, and I'm still learning constantly. Every day people are telling me stories. So um, after we're done, feel free to come up, look at this. Feel free to go down and um, look at the display case. The township needs to be applauded. They did it. I, I love the way the lobby looks right now. And with these display cases, which I was really um, concerned about because we had our display cases that we, inher that we inherited through the um, Lower Paxton uh, Alumni Association. And we weren't allowed to have those in the new lobby. And I was afraid what we were gonna get. And these are absolutely beautiful and uh, they work out fantastic so please um if you're even if you don't have any township business you just want to see some artifacts come in and um and look those over and if you have any questions on anything that's in any of those cabinets or or that just just contact the township and we'll they'll they'll get your information to us and we'll reach out to you and be glad to answer anything uh, um, get anything out let you see it whatever um, so any questions on any of our archives? And this is, this is only a small portion of what we have. Um, the, again, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff is still in boxes that we're organizing and, um, we'll, we'll be, uh, this will be our mini museum and I, I, I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, that's all I got with that. And, and again, feel free to come up and see it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Vanna. <laughs> so just, um, um, are there any committee member comments? Is there any public comments? Bill. <laughs> no, but um, no, my my father, my father, um, after World War II, um, came uh, when I was real young. He was a salesman for a company called Sanfex out of Atlanta, and I'm not sure if um, that lifestyle would have kept my mom and dad together very long. So he got a teaching job, and uh, that's that's what he did prior to that. Uh, I thought there was a whole other story. I thought there was a Oh, that would be my dad, yeah. He would tell you. Yeah, what a time I had with my father. Oh, my God. Thank you. That's good. One question I had was in noticing the vocational students in the picture, they all had ties on. <laughs> yeah. If I was using a drill press, I don't know if I'd have worn a tie. Yeah. But Or did, did the students have to wear a tie back then? Um, I actually have yes, other students. photographs uh, of them um, in class, and I and I know they were dressed <laughs> better than what we dress today. But um, check out the yearbooks. Yeah, we'll have to look at the yearbooks and see. Um, yes, sir. Or, uh, Robin. Did, yeah. Yeah, that's. That's why I was a. That's why I was a very fast runner. <laughs> I I have a lot of stories about that, but. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Uh, yes, sir.
Yes. Now the 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 website the the web page is actually changing over to fall under the township um, web. Um, the one that we have up now is actually currently came from uh, the Lingostown 250th and it merged and merged and merged. But, and I, I may change the name on that and use it as advertising, but um, either of those you may, you may if you send an, a, uh, an email to that, um, it'll come over to us. We actually, we actually were just talking about this the other week when, um, when Denise and Christy and I were um, getting some of the stuff ready for tonight, and um, we do not have, we have all the lower Paxton. I think every year until they switch, and um, we only have sporadic um, East and CD. Matter of fact, I don't even know if we have any East. Um, so we're all that, that's one item that we're really hoping somebody will will give us yeah, I've only lived in the town. I, I've seen so many changes we all have seen all these changes even though I have seen uh, and, 60 uh, and I go to a state sale is there anybody that normally goes to a state sale or to contact them because somebody this next generation don't want any of our stuff I know yep Right. And it's like, oh, that's junk. And it's there again. These are treasures that I, we have a, 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 an attic that has my mom's stuff and my wife's mom. Yep. And we're going through that. And I'm very interested in the history of, and I can photograph the last 60 years. Yep. So I, I do have a lot of stuff that I want to donate them to. Oh, wow. You know, mail, no value, and whatever it is, and so forth. And all these things were treasures. And we even went out to eat one evening, and the waiter came back and said, you know, like you're, you're paying with old bills. Wow. Yeah, Stouts. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a photograph of the house that Shokes lived in there. And I'm sitting there saying, I hope people know that there was a house there. Right. And so I hope to donate that kind of stuff and identify it, because that's the other challenge. I have a lot of photographs. That... Uh, no, that, because um, number each of us have our own little um, niche. And um, depending on what you have, we can help you. And um, the, you know, because it was, it was interesting because I had forgotten that before that, after the house, but before Muscala's Furs and then became, uh, was a car wash. And um, so, and, and again, I just grew up the street from that and you forget, uh, you know, but we, and we had Penswood uh, Market, you know, where uh, Pax Cleaners was. A lot of the, the old photos and such are so great. And, um, to, but to answer your original question, um, there's an individual that normally is here. His name's Andy Mazik. And Andy and I are very close. We uh, went to school together and such. And Andy is a um, uh, constantly, every weekend, you know, hitting all the yard sales and different things like that. 
and um, whenever he sees anything, you know, again, um, hopefully the the people are just going to give it to us for quarters or for uh, uh, free. <laughs> You know, because um, uh, we'd be very interested in that, and I also am. Um, I'm good friends with um, uh, with the Hoaglanders, who and sh um, she runs the alumni for for Central Dolphin. Um, so we're putting we we put out feelers where we can to try to acquire some of these things. And, and 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 you hit the point i mean the younger generation doesn't want to take a yearbook like this if it's not on the internet they don't want it Yes. Excellent. Yeah, we um, like in our April meeting. One one of the points that we always talk about in our meetings. And matter of fact, if you leave us your email before you leave, if um, um, Sarah in the red sweater, um, if you can give that to her, uh, that would be fantastic because we try to do an email blast. Uh, we try to put it on um, Facebook, and then we also put it on, I have um, approvals through um, the lo some of the Lower Paxton uh, next-door neighbors and the Lower Paxton nostalgia. I have a good relationship with all of them, and they allow me to put our ads out there. Um, it's You're right. That, that is our biggest thing that we talk about all the time is, is how can we market um, what we do in a in a more efficient manner. Yeah. Yep, Mr. Fleming's. Right. And there it is. It's sold and putting a car Yep. Which is yeah. yeah, the Fleming family is very interesting. They were a nice family. So I take a photograph of the building, the house across the street. That's next. Yep. And and we want to take, uh, I forget if it was one of, one of my uh, fellow commissioners, uh, but somebody said we need to go over and take as many photos as Colonial Park Mall is today. Be because how much you know that that's got to change look just like the east mall like, look what's mm -hmm. right and, <clears throat> and uh so yeah we, we we try um and the one nice thing is uh sometimes i get uh permission if the township knows yeah. that a old farmhouse or something's going to be knocked down sometimes we get permission that we can go see it real quick and we've been trying to anybody that is willing to talk with us We'll say, hey, can you give us a floorboard, or can you give us some of the, um, if it has some interesting molding around the uh, uh, windows exterior, uh, just just to put and identify. Matter of fact, the milk can that's out there somewhere, that milk can, if you're driving down Rutherford Road um, and you're traveling towards Union Deposit Road, uh, on the left hand side is an old farmhouse. Well, that old farmhouse is just what it is. It's an old farmhouse. The farm is actually where Rutherford Road goes through right now. That whole thing was 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 um, tied in with the Hawker family. And um, that milk can I bought about 30 years ago at, at an auction there. And uh, so just different things like that that we can remember what used to be. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I went through, and there are five other 
other homes in the area that are the same architect. Oh, they're sister homes? Yes. Okay. And it's quite interesting when you start seeing that, and you're saying, oh, like, it's interesting that all these homes are the same. Uh, and it's like, oh, the one that the history tells that's where the people that own the land lived. Or right. Whatever it might be. Yep. Heck yeah, and, and, we, and we like that you're thinking and helping us out. So you keep you keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. And with the with the with the photos, if, even if it's a like somebody took a picture in the 1940s or 1950s and they now have it and they're ready to discard it, it's an old photograph of Aunt Minnie and Uncle Joe. Well, there might be something in the background of that photograph. Yeah. So we're we. If you want to just rather than throw them out, give them to us first so we can we can look at them. Yep. Oh, uh, I think Bill. I think Bill. Bill. Yeah, thanks. Just make. Just push the button. It's on. Yeah. On all these yearbooks, did you? Do you guys ever put out just any, a blurb saying, "Hey, if you have any yearbooks, we'd love to have them," and keep putting out that thought on any memorabilia, photographs, things that you might not think is significant but would be. Yeah, that's a good idea, and um, we need to do more of that. I keep sending it to Pax and Harold, but they're not publishing. <laughs> yes, absolutely, they're not. But, but, but no, I agree with you 100. percent That on yearbooks, some of the schools have yearbooks. Uh, in the, what I tried to do, we had a thing going. I, I had a mentee teacher, and and we did we fixed two years worth of yearbook errors, and everything was digitized. You do your layouts. I used to do photo layouts, and everything's online. I just don't know the legal ramifications of getting that information from a school because it has kids' photos and names, and there's different rules you got to follow now. True. But still, there's there's things out there, and we were going. The, the Ancestry was going to digitize all the yearbooks. Right. Of course, they want the information. Of course, they want to sell that information, and it's a yearbook, so they're really out there. But I just thought it, you could perhaps maybe somebody's. <laughs> My point is, a lot of this stuff, we, we talked about the maps, the lower packs, and getting those digitized, and, and if it costs a lot of money, then we can, you know, I find the maps fascinating. To me, that's a number one thing of everything. It, it gives the entire history from when it was, what was it, Chester County, and then Lancaster County, right. and then Dauphin County, you know. Yep. So people will want to see those changes. But like I say, to ask people, I mean, I have a photograph, but we'd have to buy it when 3B ice cream, Huh. was a pond with yep. a two-story high dive, a yep. sand beach, and a curb. And another pond, John Goldman owned all that. Right. He owned all that land. Yep. And there was a pond where Patton's, where, well, where Patton, back it was Patton Lake. Right. Where uh, the development is. I fished in there. Yes. So just all kinds of stuff. And these photos are out there. I mean, so it would be nice if people, just the idea, you know, hey, you can donate them. To lower packs in the historical commission. Oh, I I would love it because Keep blurbing it though, because people have to see it all the time. Have you seen that missing sign? I every day I'm on Mountain Road. I think about that missing sign, the cast iron sign. Right. Where is that sign? <laughs> it's out there in someone's garage or shed. I know it is. It has to be. Yep. So no, I, I agree with you, Bill. I mean, I the more the more people want to help us preserve this, I I. I I think it's fantastic. Oh, I'll go pick up your books from people. We we have we have door to door pickup. I'm I'm everywhere anyway. So nice. Um, or you know that he knows that. So <laughs> anyway, just a th just the thought of trying to get those and, and ask for the ones you need, and then and some might be digitized. So it's just a thought. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. If somebody wants to no donate, um, they normally contact the township, and it's turned over to Amanda. And then Amanda um, uh, either 
gives me the information or um, we ask them to drop it off here and then we eventually will get it. No, these these are great ideas. I mean, I, I these are all things that I think I'll bring up. Yeah, you got that right. He, he'll, he'll give it to uh, Sarah D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, with that said, um, can I ask for adjournment? Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor. Thank you all for coming tonight, and please enjoy and check out the, our display cases right outside.